Given a choice, I swear most NHL head coaches would have nothing to do with their goaltenders. They wouldn't even know their names. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer Daily Shots of Steelers and Pirates where you found this. Penguins and the Devils face off tonight in Newark. It's yet another really, really big game uh, that will either save or crush the season and no hyperbole needs to be involved. When you're talking about a franchise that's been in the Stanley Cup playoffs 16 consecutive years, when you're talking about three guys currently on the team who are inexorably connected to that streak. And then when you're talking on top of that about all three of those guys not really caring anywhere near as much about the streak as they do about what follows it because all they're in this for, all they're ever in this for is another Stanley Cup, then yeah, it actually is that big. So imagine being just a couple weeks out from those playoffs and not knowing who your goaltender is. That's where Mike Sullivan is today, my friends. He can't know. It's not just that we don't know. It's not that Andy Kyoto, his goaltending coach, is going to be able to impart some sort of high-level wisdom on this front because Andy can't know. Think of it this way. If you start Tristan Jari, you have one of two things that are more likely to happen than anything else. One, he's going to get hurt. Two, he's going to not play particularly well. That's what's in play right now. The last time Jari was just great goes back a long, long time. Or if he's been great, he's still gotten hurt, and he's gotten hurt in that same game. These aren't even opinions on my part. This isn't like me taking a shot at the guy. This is actually what's happened time and time again this season with this player. If you put Casey DeSmith in, you could get one really good game out of him. And maybe that really good game was Sunday night against the Flyers. And you'll see the Detroit version of him in this one if he goes tonight against New Jersey. Because hasn't that also been the pattern? Sullivan's actually put himself on the spot a couple of times, just in recent days, by saying, Casey's deserving of this. Casey's earned this. As if to suggest he's about to go off on a little bit of a run with a goaltender, which is the one and only thing that a head coach actually wants to do with any goaltender. Every head coach wishes it was still 1967 and you could just know who your goalie is every night without ever having to bother with him, ever having to say anything to him, and again, maybe not even knowing the dude's name. But what's happened every time Sullivan's done this now? He's done it twice in recent weeks. There it goes, the very next game. And you feel like a dummy. I'm sure Sullivan feels like a dummy. After each one of those, like, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? But then something happens to Jari. He puts DeSmith back in. DeSmith goes, oh, it wins a game. And the team plays really well. And everyone says, wow, it's really great that we had Casey back there playing so hard for us. And you think, okay, here we go. Here we go. But you, you don't. You can't. You can't think of anything beyond just the next game. And even then, I'm trying to picture Sullivan showing up at Prudential Center bright and early this morning. Maybe a couple of coaches are there. He's already got Todd Reardon there. He's got Mike Vellucci. Maybe Andy Kyoto's showing up a little early because he thinks his advice might be needed. Or he's hiding in some corner hoping no one asks him. And Sullivan says, what do I do tonight? What do I do? And everybody who's sitting there just stays silent. Well, if I put Jari in, and he did play pretty well for most of the game against Boston. You can argue that he played pretty well through the whole thing, even though the Bruins scored a goal 
within a minute or two of every single time the Penguins were able to get one in, and you get tired of those regardless of who's responsible. Or you could say, man, I really like the way we rallied around Casey and the way he bounced back and that resilience that he's shown. And, you know, given the other guy's health, we might just need to pump him up a little bit more and hope that we can ride him just like we were going to last year against the Rangers before Louis Deming ended up making the whole thing moot. Wow. Who ever thought after 2017... When the Penguins were spoiled beyond words with the dual goaltending of Matt Murray and Marc-Andre Fleury that we'd be having conversations like this so soon after. My goodness. When we come back, J1Q. Today's J1Q comes from Ken, who says, What's up with Evgeny Malkin taking penalties? Is it the fact that he's not moving his feet? Number one thing in hockey that's preached the minute you put on skates in peewee hockey? Unbelievable. You know, most of Gino's penalties are that, combined with, since you already referenced adolescence, a childlike anger. When he doesn't have the puck, I have never had a better way of phrasing it than that. And I've used that a lot over the course of his career. That's how he looks. That's how he reacts. Someone has the puck. He wants it. He wants it all the time. And he's willing to either bend or outright break the rules to get it back without thinking about it. Um. If you're if you're someone who's instructing him, whether it's as a child or on the Russian junior team or on into Pittsburgh, there's a part of you that wants to say to yourself, listen, I value so much how you will pursue this puck and how you want it all the time. It is a rare and beautiful trait. It is not something that's to be taken for granted or lightly discarded. That's the reason, and people ask this one a lot too as it relates to some of Gino's riskier passes and result in turnovers. That's the reason why you don't ever bring down the full sledgehammer on him. Two reasons, actually. One, He already knows, okay? He knows these penalties are dumb. He knows some of these passes are dumb. But two, if you take both of those elements off the table, especially when he was younger, you really risk minimizing the incredible gain that you get from this player exhibiting those very traits, I know nobody wants to hear this. and Everybody's yelling at me right now as, the, as I'm saying this. It's like, what are you talking about? These are just dumb penalties. Yeah, they're dumb penalties. They're absolutely dumb penalties. And what you described, not moving his feet and so forth, is part of that. He also happens to lead the Penguins as, and has been perennially one of the NHL's leaders in takeaways as a forward That's some pretty rare air. And the reason for that is this same mindset. He can't stand when somebody else has the puck. So is his stick going to go poking around in somebody's feet where it doesn't necessarily belong on occasion? Sure it will. Is he going to have a free hand on some dude's shoulder every once in a while? Yeah. Does he need to be a whole lot more disciplined than that when the games get even bigger than they are now? Uh Uh-huh. But did you really feel like that game was in jeopardy the other night against Philadelphia? Because if you did, I didn't get the impression that he did. And that actually was the bigger problem. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. I don't know how you guys are getting through this season. I really don't. Let's do it again tomorrow. Tomorrow.